Hey there, welcome to another episode of Moonbane Design. I'm your host Moonbane, this video is part of my favorites series, and today we're going to be talking about my favorite arcade games. So I was a kid that grew up in the 80s and and um, I think it was like 85, maybe, I don't know, it was, it's mid to late 80s when I started becoming old enough to actually go to arcades. And I went to arcades back in their heyday, guys. Uh, you, know, you saw the, the Don Bluth machines, with Ace Ace, and um, Dragon, Dragon's Lair, and... Uh, all kinds of other machines. Uh, I remember seeing original Street Fighters. I remember seeing sit-down cabs for OutRun. Uh, I, I remember a stand-inside, stand-up Tron machine. I remember a boxing machine that later I found out it was Punch-Out. It was actually one of my dad's favorites, where it was the, the two-screen Punch-Out machine. Um, and give you guys an idea of uh, you know, the, these these were companies not like Time Out. Time Out came much, much later, uh, especially when Mainco was pushing them. And but like I, I'm, I'm talking about old school arcades like Diamond Gems and Aladdin, Putt Putt Golf and other places like that. Uh, Magic Mountain, like one of the ones you know, out and that they they came about in my area when Super Street Fighter was first out and it was just a brand new characters of Street Fighter. Arcades were wonderful. There was a sense of community, a uh a sense of rivalry, although be it friendly rivalry. And even when I went to college there was a an arcade at college. You know, and we had Marvel vs. Capcom turn. Capcom 2 tournament. And it was such a closely knit community then that, like, we had house rules. Like, you can't use Ice Man. He took no chip damage, and we everyone agreed that that was unfair. But um, enough of me waxing on about the good old days and stuff like that. Uh, these are actually my favorite arcade games. Uh, these are just the ones that I grew up with and that I had exposure to and had a ton of fun with. First up is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 1989 by Konami. This game is awesome. Big four player version in Chuck E. Cheese. Um, back then it was actually called Showbiz. And having tons and tons and tons of fun with it. I remember me and the kids in my neighborhood, we, we wanted a home version of this so much. And eventually Nintendo did come out with a good, the, the Super Nintendo did come out with a good home version. But you know, playing the arcade during someone's birthday party was so good. Um, next up is Virtual On 1996 by Sega. This was a monstrously huge graphic, and the first time that I saw one is, was in Epcot Center uh, when I was you know, on a trip to Disney World, and it was a beautiful thing to see. Um, by that time, I had actually seen, or by that time, I had actually played the game already on the Sega Saturn. So I was pretty good at it already. Next up we have Children of the Atom by Capcom 1994. This was one of the first times that Capcom, you know, kind of strayed away from Street Fighter and, and their own properties and they wanted to go outside of the box a little bit and I have to say they knocked it out of the park. I had friends that played Sentinel, I had friends that played Omega Red, I had Friends that played Cyclops. Uh, and it was just all around very good. And of course, I was a little kid and I played ever so cheesy Wolverine. But again, just another game that really just knocked it out of the park and just kept on 
kept on making people come back to it over and over. Next up is Daytona. Uh, Daytona USA, actually. 1994 by Sega. Now, my college still had the four-player machine, I think, in 1996. I wasn't attending there at that time, but uh, my dad was going back to that college every once in a while uh, because it was also a place that he went to college and uh, doing various things for the school. And I would sit in their arcade and play Daytona, and they had the four-player machine. It was massive. And the attract mode on that thing was so loud and everything, but it wasn't annoying. It was actually like a very well done attract mode and just running through the races and playing four player and stuff was just, just such a massive overhaul and just it just it just took everything over. Of course, now we're gonna move on to Marvel vs. Street Fighter. I think that was a uh, 1994 by Capcom. Um, this is another time that Capcom decided that they were going to venture a little bit outside of their comfort zone, and they started doing their versus. And Marvel vs. Capcom was just another thing that just launched everything for them. And I remember playing this game a huge amount as well, just loving it. And of course, I stuck with uh, Wolverine as much as I could. But, you know, I, I'd, I'd throw in, like, some Ryu or Ken, or maybe, you know, just to, just to try to mix it up a little. Uh, another great game is The Simpsons, 1991 by Konami. Uh, between this and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles were, like, the big games at my local Chuck E. Cheese. And it was either Chuck E. Cheese or Showbiz, depending on what year it was. Um, eventually, Big uh, Chief bought Showbiz out, but again, another great game, another big time quarter muncher, and another birthday bash game. And I remember at one point in time they had both machines up and running at the same time, right beside each other. And so there was like you know, twelve kids fighting over eight positions, and when you lost one position. You got to swap off of Simpsons over to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Again, Simpsons with the tag teams and stuff like that and the team ups with like Marge and Maggie or Marge, the, um, Marge and, and Bart teaming up and doing a whirlwind attack or doing, you know, any, any number of those things. It was just a great huge amount of fun at the beat em up. Another beat em up that was not very common to see in my area was Alien vs. Predator Arcade. 1994 by Capcom, I believe. Could be wrong about that one. But the oh yeah, it was, I was wrong about Marvel vs. Street Fighter. It's 1997. But let's just move on. Um, Alien vs. Predator. Everybody wanted to see this kind of movie back growing up. We saw the Alien series. We saw the Predators, and we wanted to make that connection. And this game gave us that connection. And it even borrowed from some of the comic books and characters. And it was just a lot of fun. You got to run around and just kill hundreds and hundreds of aliens and probes. Just, it felt appropriate. It felt just like what everybody was asking for. And it was definitely quite. Uh, so go a little bit old school's Gauntlet Legends uh, by Midway 1998. I played the hell out of this game. And I mean a lot. There were so many times where you, know, you would just pump another quarter in to keep going and keep going. And there were several times where my dad would get frustrated and he would just tell me, he's like, no, this is your last quarter. We've got to go do other stuff. And I just, I wanted to keep playing that game, you know, and, and playing it with friends and then having a save file that you could access later and stuff. And then eventually it came to the home market and people just kept playing it and kept playing it. I remember that game so well and just having so much fun with it. Earlier I mentioned 
Marvel vs. Capcom 1 and 2, 1998 and 2000, both by Capcom. Um, guys, what can I say about this? This is a wonderful series. There's nothing wrong with Marvel vs. Capcom 1 or 2. Um, I mean, there's a couple of characters that might be considered overpowered, but these, these came out, and I was in college at the time, and the line being like, you'd have eight, nine, ten people deep waiting on each side of the machine trying to get in so that they could play Marvel vs. Capcom. And it was an amazing, amazing accomplishment. And I loved the game. And it should be played by anybody on those systems. The number of characters you could pick on either one. You know, the first one was great, and then they just upped the game with the second one. The tag in and the tag out system. It was just a whole, just a whole experience that was just there for you. Um, now we're going to move on to something that's a little less common. Uh, the only reason I got to play these is because there was a local comic book shop that had them in a back room. That's the Dungeons and Dragons series. Like, 1996 by Capcom was the uh, Shadows of Mystara, and 1993, I think, was Tower of Doom. Um, they both played a lot alike. Uh, and in fact, a lot of times I just get them mixed up in my head. They were both a lot of fun. Um, you could play with all of your friends to create a party and just go through and beat up on kobolds and beat up on on like all kinds of villains and dungeons and dragons and you know what tsr did a great job by licensing this out to capcom and every once in a while you'll see it come back out on something like steam or on uh, a digital storefront <clears throat> excuse me and it's just great it's just a lot of fun going through and picking up the magic and spending the gold and upgrading your character and leveling up and picking their, the correct character for your playstyle. It's just great. It's too much fun. Uh, now we're going to move on to one of my favorites from my, me and my dad. Marvel Super Heroes 1995 Capcom. This is another time, I think this is like the second time that Capcom moved outside of their comfort zone and started using uh, characters that were not their first property and they had things like uh, oh, what was it? like they had Spider-Man, they had Captain America and those were two of my dad's favorites and I stuck with Wolverine and every once in a while I would do Iron Man or uh, War Machine and just, just the, the epic battles that me and my dad have great and uh, just some of the stage music is awesome. Uh, my favorite is Captain America's stage. It sets the mood for everything. And the the sound system for that arcade machine is great. I love playing every minute of it. And it's just a great memory of me and my dad playing an arcade machine. And we're going to finish this up with... Uh, a Neo Geo game, 1996 Metal Slug. Metal Slug is a classic in its own right. It's got the action, it's got the music, it's got a wonderful art style, uh, great play mechanics. Uh, you can have vehicles that you can jump into and out of. It's, it's all around classic, and nothing, nothing really beats it. It's almost forged its own uh, category and the only thing that starts coming close is the old Contra style and honestly I think the own version of Contra beats the arcade version and Metal Slug just, just has that grit and that grind to it that kind of made it a little bit more realistic but still in the same vein cartoony enough to where it doesn't get, like, a mature rating for what it's doing. And all the power-ups, guns, and the hilarious ways that you can die and just not 
you know, and, and, but you can still learn from everything that you're doing in it. And that's definitely why it made it on this list. Well, that's it for this episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane. I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. I have videos on the 1st and the 15th of every month, and I look forward to sharing them with you. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.